Hey, what's going on, everybody? This your main man, the Malcolm X of comedy. Signing in, checking in yet again. Black Run is the name. Be sure you follow me on all my social media platforms at B-L-A-Q-R-O-N. That's B-L-A-Q-R-O-N. I said B-L-A-Q-R-O-N. Follow my YouTube. Download my special. Come say what's up on Twitter. Tell your auntie to follow me on Facebook. And of course, you got to double tap and like me on IG. And I'm rocking with my girl, Michelle C. And Candy Kisses TV. Oh my. It's the Jill of all trades, Michelle C. A.K.A. DJ Make a Move. She cute. Your host of Candy Kisses TV everywhere you need to be. And if you don't know by now, it's not your typical interview, y'all. Candy Kisses. Blown away. Candy Kisses, TV for tomorrow today. Man, throw that all through on that bitch. That you sound like Daddy Pain. Hi, this is Kim Cole, and you are rocking with Candy Kisses TV. It's your boy, Talon, baby. Michelle and Candy Kisses TV. With my girl, Michelle C. Don't take it personal. Bruh man from the fifth floor in the ATL chitty with Candy Kisses TV. What's up y'all? You're watching Candy Kisses TV with my whole girl Michelle. Hello there. Have you asked yourself what you're missing? I have. It's Candy Kisses TV. <laughs> What up, what up, what up? It's your girl, Michelle C, a.k.a. DJ Make a Move, the Jill of all trades. And I'm back again with another dope talent. Now, you know what we do each and every time right out here on the same time. I got to threaten you a little bit. Go ahead and subscribe right now. I'm going to tell your mom. Act like she done raised you right. Don't get it twisted. It's free 99. All I'm asking you to do is like, comment, subscribe. It's free, my nigga. All right, so we finna get into it, cuz. Now, this is going to be... The special technology edition. <laughs> but we're going to make it work and we're going to get it done. I am bringing you another dope talent. This man has been doing comedy for a good minute on his grind. The hustle is real strong. I want to call him the roast champion. That should be one of his uh, titles, if you don't know, because this nigga will roast the fuck out of you like your mama ain't his friend. So <laughs> give it up for comedian Black Rod. What's going on? That's the crowd going wild. That, 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 that's the sound of the crowd going wild right there. <laughs> Thank y'all. Y'all hush. Hush. What's up, Michelle? What's that's up, baby? That's how we doing this thing. All right. Please let them know one more time how to follow you on social media so they know how to get all up in your business like I'm finna do. It's real simple, man. Follow me everywhere. B-L-A-Q-R-O-N. That's B L A Q. R O N B is in boy L A Q R O N as in Negroes, which is what we are. Follow me and get all my funny. All right, so we're gonna get into it right now. Okay, my question I always ask comedians, especially because I'm a aspiring comedian right now. I literally just lost my comedy virginity last night. <laughs> What was your first time on stage like? Okay, so what was my first time on stage like? Well, I mean, it was good because if I'd have sucked, I would have never did it again. But my first time on stage was nothing like how I thought it was going to go. Number one, the time go by super quick. Uh, but at the same time, it feels like it's dragging on. It's like a fight. Like a fight lasts like maybe 30 seconds, but it feel like you was fighting for a whole week. It's the same thing. Like, so for me, it felt like, like every minute, every second slowed down, but it went by in the blink of an eye. I wish I could go back and relive it for real, for real. Okay, listen, my first uh, thing last night, I think the good thing is I've been behind the scenes 
of comedy for years. I used, you know, because my my official trade is I'm a makeup artist. So I used to do makeup for different comedians behind the scenes. So I've been in like behind the scenes, the green rooms, and all this stuff for years. So it wasn't nerve wracking. Like I didn't know what was going to like what was going on, but it's just trying to get your what's the word I'm looking for. I, I guess trying to find your comfortability on stage. Cause my thing was when they tell you to get like, uh, you know, you got three minutes, you know, watch for the light or whatever. Now I'm just like, right. let me just get this shit out. I ain't even saying, Hey, uh, my name is like, I'm just, I'm rushing through that shit. But, um, I won't say it was a bad experience. I will say, you know, I enjoyed it and it was, it was not a bad situation because most of the people there I knew, like, you know, like I said, I've been in the comedy game behind the scenes for years. So like all the comedians there I knew. So I'm like, okay, I ain't really tripping in front of like to, to go on stage. It was just more so right. what do you do to make them stop looking at that game on TV? <laughs> Well, first things first, you have to you have to know that when you get on stage, it is your job to take command of the audience. Just like if you were, you know, preaching, just like if you were uh doing a sermon, just like if you were doing a speech, a TED talk, just like if it was your first night uh at Pea Valley, just like if it was your first time uh doing anything you have to get up there and immediately take control of the room not p valley <laughs> girl you know you want to dance at p valley you know you want to dance on p valley don't do that why are you bullshitting um <laughs> i i done been an extra at p valley i i ain't do no dancing scene or another shit like let me tell you what's funny about that i went on a um the matter of fact first season so my mom, she's uh, she just wrote a book and she's trying to get into the uh, movie industry and wants to make her book a, a movie. So she's like, you know, going to these different um, casting calls and she saw me try to do it. She's like, I'm going to do it too. So we get we both get booked for P Valley. And this is, I told you, this is the first season. So never, um, never did we, we didn't even know what the P stood for. So we got booked for a uh, church scene. So we're sitting in the church scene or whatever. And everything's cool. So now, like, you know, it's like, okay, where does this episode air? What, what is it or whatever? We all excited. So we start seeing the previews for it. And we was like, okay, this look different. It, it, you know, we was in the church scene. What is, is that a poll? Like, what's, okay, well, all right. So we done got Stars Network. So we can go ahead and watch our little scene whenever it come up. We saw that uh, first couple of episodes. It was like, nigga, are we in a porn? <laughs> and you know how like you feel like oh my god this your first time doing some extra shit with your mama and y'all in the goddamn movie or a goddamn show that's about pop pussy popping and goddamn i'm like this well this is a hell of a way to break into the industry goddamn <laughs> so, so yeah p valley is a thing in the <laughs> <world right> <laughs> You know, you'd be surprised. A lot of a lot of women break into the industry the same exact way. It's just that they ain't acting. Okay. okay. So my next question is, how did you decide that you wanted to be in the entertainment industry? To be honest, I never thought that I would have a career in entertainment. I used to just be funny to get girls' phone numbers. Like that was my way of breaking the ice. That was my way of getting a chick to to get at me. You know, outside the party, that was a good way for me to get tips when I was waiting tables. Uh, it was a good way for me to disarm my supervisors when I would be slacking off and fucking up at my job. I'm sorry. Can we cuss? I'd be messing up at my jobs. Uh, so I always use comedy as a defense mechanism and, and as a uh, tactic to pull girls. I never thought I would do it for a career. Now, if you could play the perfect movie role, what would it be for you? Oh, that's a good question. If I could play the perfect movie role, uh, either, okay, either I'm going to be a criminal mastermind where it's like, like I'm on some like Ocean's Eleven or like, you know, like. Where like I figured it out, I'm 12 steps ahead of the FBI type thing. Or I got to play uh, the role of one of those dudes that, like, is he an angel? Is he an alien? 
you don't know, or well, I just come into everybody's life and I'm helping them with everything. And I got like super Negro powers. Hell yeah. Kind of like powder plus the preacher's wife. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That would be me. <coughs> Hell yeah. Super Negro powder powers. Plus the preacher's wife. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That would be me. Okay. <laughs> like it is super nigga. <laughs> Ooh, I could do a good superhero movie too. I could play a good ass superhero too. Okay. I, I can see that. Super nigga and um I could be your sidekick. I don't know what my name gonna be, but <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> it's this bitch over here. She my she my road dog. That's just that's gonna be my little side piece name. <laughs> it's right, super so nigga on. and his trusted right. sidekick. Oh, you know what? Heavy it's chest. Crazy. All right. So my question is, if you had a bad set on stage, how do you get through it without wanting to fight the audience? Shit, it depends on who fault it is. Really, is it my fault for not connecting to the audience, not being able to read the room? Or are these niggas just being rowdy and loud and refusing to listen and letting me get my shit off? Or am I just up there bumming? Or is somebody heckling, like being intentionally disruptive? Or does the mic suck? Do the speakers suck? You know what I mean? Am I having to compete with the TVs and, and the waitresses with their booty out? Like, it's a whole lot of mitigating factors, but if ideally, if it's a good show in a theater, great sound system, um, microphone ain't popping and fizzling, um, and the crowd is sitting there ready to laugh and they're attentive, and I'm having a bad set, that's my fault. And what I need to do is throw everything that I was going to do out the goddamn window and connect with that audience right then. Read that goddamn. Nigga, I don't care if you got to roast. I don't care if you got to start uh, doing crowd work. I don't care if you got to start doing all your closers in a row. Um, shit, do your strongest joke right then in that moment. Uh, shit, if all else fails, talk about sex. That, that normally gets everybody attention. Talk about, say, roast somebody. Talk about somebody's titties. And then start talking about sex. And then after that, you ought to be able to get by. What you don't do is start karaoke in with the comedy. Start doing a goddamn best of every other comedian's joke. If you biting the bullet, you up there eating that sandwich, eat that goddamn sandwich. You up there bombing and you doing your best, continue to bomb, nigga. Don't start doing another nigga's jokes. Don't do that. That's what you don't do. Chahoy. Man, listen, my, my biggest thing, because I'm from um I'm from LA, but raised in Clayco. So if you know anything about Atlanta and, and Southside and Clay, like nigga, if you grow up in, in these schools over here, ha knowing how to roast is just automatic, but I'm never the person that is the initiator of the roast. So I ain't going to start the shit, but I'm damn sure going to continue it. And my hardest part when it comes to roasting is because I don't want to make nobody feel bad on purpose. But I know when I do roast, I'm going for the jugular. So it's like, I don't want to roast them to the point where they're going to want to meet me outside afterwards. But that's like, nigga, I go deep. So they're going to like, this bitch, I, I don't want to get fucked up trying to do comedy. So I'm, like, I'm trying to find that, that finesse where you get them off you, but not enough where they want to punch you in the goddamn throat when you leave the stage. No, so when you roasting, which when you when you roasting, you give them you give them two setups, and then you go for the knockout punch. So in other words, like you punch them in the stomach, you punch them in the eye, and then when they reach up and grab their eye, that's when you slice their jug in the vein. But you doing that to make an example out of them, so the whole crowd go whoa, and then they shut up, and then you start laughing while the crowd go whoa. And then you say, now see, if you'd have shut your ass up, I wouldn't have had to do you like that. And it's like an ass whooping at that point. It still hurt, but it's for correct. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you this, uh, this th the last thing about um last night, and then we're gonna move on. But um, we like I said, I was amongst you know family and friends that were um the comedians that I know, so I didn't feel too bad. But it was a young lady that went on 
ahead of me. And I don't know if she just couldn't grasp the audience or what happened or whatever. So I'm trying to, cause I'm like, I'm doing this thing too. So I'm paying attention to every little thing, just trying to make sure, you know, I, I do what I, whatever I can to do whatever better than that situation. And she going on and on and on about whatever her jokes are. And I'm still listening for the punchlines, not saying that she wasn't funny. It's just after a while, she started sounding like Charlie Brown's teacher to me. He wah, 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 and I'm just like, okay. I don't know if it's just me being nervous, trying to figure out what I'm going to do next, or she just really lost the crowd. So I lean over <laughs> to Janet, which is the, the uh, you know, Janet Dollar. She was the headliner. I was like, so, so Janet, I just got to be better than her, right? She was like, bitch, your sock better than her. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm trying to avoid that, that situation. But I will say, just like you said, you take that bomb, listen, nigga. She got off that stage. She didn't turn around, say, all right, good night. She walked right the fuck out the door. She was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to walk out. And I was like, you know what? I ain't even mad at that. Yeah, hey, you do. <laughs> take the bomb with your ass. Don't leave it here. <laughs> yeah, no, don't sit your ass there with that I just bombed energy rubbing off on the other comedians. Get the fuck on. Go on, go home. Go home and sit in that and think about what you did. Hell no, get your ass the fuck up out of there. Don't be sitting there still mingling and networking. You should get the fuck on. Get on. It's like you shitted on yourself or you throw it up at a party. It's time to go after that. Just because you wiped your mouth don't mean we didn't see you throw up. And your breath still smell like throw up. Go on. Go home. We'll see you at the next party. The next party. <laughs> you, got a, you got a cute ludicrous. Roll out. <laughs> All right, so we get ready to move on. All right, so I'm gonna get into your music um, knowledge. So, who is your favorite rapper and singer, and why? And are you ready for Bone Thugs in the Three Six verses? Because I know I am. Man, they starting to run out of people now. Bone Thugs and Harmony verse Three Six. My, I don't know. they not gonna be able to do Crossroads. Uncle Charles been gone. They not going to be able to have the an angel dude come through and touch people on their forehead. Three, six, my, is Crunchy Black going to be there? Let me find out you got is DJ Paul finally going to explain to everybody what's wrong with his arm? If not, I don't want to watch the verses. I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch no more verses is, 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 until they give me Buster Rhymes versus Missy Elliott. Then, then I'll watch a goddamn versus. Because black people, we picked pretty much everybody else that we wanted to see with the first 12 or so versus. Ain't nobody else really got a catalog deep enough to have no verses. So then who was your uh, favorite versus thus far? My, me, myself, my favorite one. R&B wise, of course, Brandy and Monica, because that's just what I was raised doing. But when it comes to the hip hop side, I never realized how many songs the locks had. And I really thought Dipset was going to win that. But goddamn, that was basically Jada Kiss versus uh, Dipset because Jada Kiss made me a believer. So I, that was my favorite hip hop. And then I, and my only other favorite hip hop was um, Jeezy and... Uh, uh, nigga, the belly nigga, uh, uh, with the damn, I can't think of his name. Uh, lemon pepper, the freeze cup, what Gucci, yeah, him. Um, and I only like that one because the nigga was <laughs> look like he was gonna fight that nigga every five seconds. So, but those are my favorites. Part two drops next Monday. Subscribe now, like, comment, and share.